How's it going, everybody? Dana here with North Central Coins. I am joined here by my old friend, Kellen. Do you want to introduce yourself? He is just starting out in his coin collecting journey, and I thought, what better way to introduce him to the hobby than having ourselves a little coin battle? So I went to my local coin shop, and I picked up a big old sack of 10 pounds of mixed date copper pennies. Now, the oldest penny that should be in this bag should be a 1960, and the most recent should be a 1996. So anything we find that's going to be any older or any newer than that, we are going to be adding up as points if we find any errors or varieties or anything uncirculated. We are going to be accumulating points. But we're going to start this hunt off, see if we can find anything good. I got my new penny mat here to help us out to find any key dates or low mintage coins. But before we do start this hunt off, I would really appreciate it if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you have not and you would like to see more videos just like this. And then without further ado, what do you say we get this penny hunt started? Are you ready? I'm ready, brother. All right. Well, let's do it. Kellen here, and I just pulled a 1979 double die reverse right off the hop here. Darn there, bud. Take a little look see under here. If you see the nine. Let's get her there. Oh, look at that. There we go. Look at that nine. That nine is super sus. Yeah, that's definitely at least a double nine on there. So that's a nice find right off the bat. I've just started going through my pile here. We just separated them into piles and we're just kind of sifting through, seeing what we can find. And uh, we've already noticed what looks like some older young heads in there. So it looks like we got ourselves a nice little hunt here. And that is definitely a nice little air coin to start it off. So we'll keep going along and tune you guys back in if and when we find anything else good. Well, I've just started sorting through my pile of pennies and I just found my first goodie here. And it looks to be a 1958 young head. So this definitely shouldn't be in here. The oldest pennies that should be in here are 1960. So a nice old young head and a nice point for me. I definitely need them to catch up. I'm going to keep going along and tune you guys back in. All right, Kellen is going through, and he is on a bit of a hot streak already. He pulled that 79 air, and look what he just found right here. He just found a George head already. This is a 1944, so a World War II era. I think he already found a young head, too. What did you find, like a 58 or something like that? I don't know what this he is. found a 58 young head, yep. Nice. So a 58, a 44, and a 79 in what you've only looked through, like 10 pennies. So yeah. um, for what is supposed to be only 1960 until 1996, this is already turning out to be like one of the better petty hunts I've ever done. So um, he's definitely smoking me already. We're going to keep <laughs> going along, seeing if we find any other goodies just like this. All right. We are both going along, and the amount of good stuff that we are finding here is pretty unfathomable i just found a penny that is an incredible toner if you look at this the blue hue that is on it is just absolutely unreal and i've also been finding some young heads we got a 57 there a 55 so those definitely should not be in this bag but what i'm tuning you in for right now is we actually just found our very first foreign coin of this hunt and this one is actually a really cool one it has a pig design on it i don't think i've ever seen this one and it is a Bermuda. It's just about the same size as all of the other pennies and it looks like it's made of copper as well but never found one of these. Always like to add the foreign coins to my collection so I'll throw this to the side and me and Kellen Buddy shall keep going along with our big old piles of pennies here. Just looking through and we pulled a 1962 looks like a hanging to as well. Put her on the scope Take a look at that too. Looks like she's a hanging. It's a little hard to tell, but I see like something like it's hard to tell, but like there's like a dyed chip or something that's like above the two. And this one is at least looks like a single hanging too to me. And it's in pretty good condition too. So this might honestly be even worth like a dollar or two, maybe even like five bucks if someone's someone's super interested. So yeah, that's great. We also checked for the guitar underneath uh, in between the one and the maple leaf, but unfortunately no luck. Yes, because I guess there is a guitar slash harp variety as well. That'd be a dope one to find, but I guess we'll keep looking and maybe we'll get lucky in the rest of our piles. But 
another sick variety for Kellen right here. We'll keep going through and uh, tune you guys back in. All right, so I'm just going through and I found, I don't want to touch it with my greasy grubby fingers like I just manhandled it right there too much, but I just found a 1979 that is an absolute stunner. And when I threw this bad boy under the scope, if you look at that date there, it is looking like it might have some doubling going on along the bottom of the nine and also along the left-hand side of the left-hand nine as well. And this one is also in really good shape. So it might even be worth like a dollar or two if I was to actually get it confirmed. I don't believe PCGS or NGC um, validates errors or varieties like this, but if uh, ICCS was to attribute it, this might actually be worth some money. So I'm gonna try not to touch it too much more than I have already. Put it off to the side and we'll keep going along. Tune you guys back in if we find any other goodies. Callum back here found a 1967 and this one has lots of doubling on her. We'll take her look under the scope here. This is like the most crazy doubling I've ever heard. I'll, I'll situate this. You just get all right. Here we go. Where where was it? It was uh, by the Regina. There has some intense doubling going on here. Yeah, like if you look at like the G and the E. My lord. And it's honestly not in like horrible shape either. Like it's like maybe like a almost uncirculated I would say. So this might be worth a couple bucks because people definitely like to have these uh, pennies with the doubling on them. So another nice little variety find for Kellen to add to the board. Well, we are both just chugging along here finding all sorts of amazing stuff. And I just found a little goodie here I definitely did not expect to find a US wheat scent so for all we know this could be a key date or something pretty old I think the first year is 1909 so I thought I'd flip it over and we could see what date it is together here let's flip this bad boy over 1952 so it isn't too old but if it was a Canadian penny it would be a George the sixth and I'm definitely stoked to be able to get a wheat penny in a bag of pennies that shouldn't be before the year 1960. So pretty awesome little find there. I'll add it to my stack and we shall keep this hunt going. Hopefully we find some more good stuff just like this. Halfway through my big old pile and it looks like the coin gods have just dropped off a gracious gift for me. My first Georgie of this hunt. And it looks like it is going to be a 1943. So... A World War II era, George VI, for me to add to my little pile of finds, which is quickly stacking up. Callan is going along, and he is being extremely thorough and is checking for errors and varieties, which I definitely like to see. He has a nice little pile of finds over there. So we're going to keep going along. Hopefully we find some more good stuff, and we will tune you guys back in. All right, we've both been going through. We haven't found anything too, too amazing, but... It looks like I just found my second George the Sixth of this hunt. So I thought I would flip it over. We could take a look together, see what the date is. Let's take a little look. See, uh, 1944. I think that's the same date that Kellen got earlier in this hunt. So two 1944 World War II pennies already in this hunt of what should only be young heads and later. So I will definitely not complain. I'll take these all day long. Hopefully there's a few more Georgies lying up ahead. Well, just a few down and I found myself another 1979 that is an absolute stunner. And I threw this bad boy under the scope. If you look at the date on that, that is some absolutely crazy doubling going on. We found all sorts of 1979s and we've been checking every single one of them. And this is one of the most significant ones we've found so far. And it's a pretty darn good shape too, if you ask me. So another great variety to add to the board. Well, I'm just finishing up my pile over here. I only got a few to go. And look, what just poked out at the bottom of the pile. We got ourselves one last Georgie to finish our half of this hunt off. And it is going to be a 1945. Very nice. I think we got a 44, a 45. I can't remember what the other date is, but I'll check it out and let you guys know by the end of this hunt. But man, we have found all sorts of errors and varieties. 
Um, when we wrap this hunt up, we'll show you a few of the notable finds for sure, but I'm just about done here. My buddy Kellen over here is still going through his big old pile over there. And man, does he have some pretty good finds as well. So we're going to finish this hunt off and then we will wrap this up for you guys. All right, Kellen here. And we just found something very peculiar. I don't think I've ever seen this before. Definitely I've never seen this before, but I showed Dane and he also has never seen this before. Yeah, I have, I have no idea on this one, guys. There we go. We're going to flip it over. Look at that. It looks like, I thought when he showed this to me at first, I thought it was a dime at first. I thought he found a silver dime in his penny box, but it looks like it may have been struck on either the wrong planchette on this side, or maybe someone exposed to some kind of chemicals or something, but I have never seen a double-sided penny like this before with silver on the one side and copper on the other side and this is like dark brown with a little of that greenish toning i don't know this is this could be an absolutely insane find right here if this is really struck on the wrong planchette this thing could be worth like 50 plus dollars easily so definitely gonna have to send a picture off to my coin guy and see what he thinks but if you guys want to let me know what you think down in the comments i would definitely appreciate it but i tried to give it a tiny little scratch with my nail to see if any paint rubbed off and I, didn't, I don't want to damage it or anything, but it doesn't appear to be paint. Um, it's a little hard to tell, but it definitely looks intriguing. Um, if you guys want to let me know what you think. But we're going to keep this hunt going. And if we find any other goodies, Kellen still has a nice little pile. I'm just about done. So we'll wrap this hunt up, hopefully, and show you guys all the good stuff we found. Come back here. Found a Georgie. <laughs> Hiya, Georgie. Hiya, Georgie. Found a Georgie in 1948. Which 1948 we'll does have a variety for as well, right? It does. It certainly does have a variety. And we're going to show you that variety right here underneath the scope. There are actually several varieties. I think four varieties for 1948. You want to look at the last A in Gratia. So what you want to do is you want to look at the last A in Gratia and you want to see if the A is pointing to or in between the denticles. Now, I have looked at many of these myself, and from what I can see here, this is an A points to the small denticles. Um, usually it's pretty pronounced when it points between, and this one looks pretty good like it's pointing to it. So if this were the large denticle variety, it'd be worth a little bit more, but even in this condition, it can be worth almost $5. So this right here for paying, I think like five cents for it is a great find. Um, Callum is doing really, really good in this hunt, especially considering it's his first coin roll hunt ever. He's doing really good with all these varieties. I'm actually super impressed. So we got a little bit to go here and then we're going to finish this hunt off for you guys. Well, we're going through and we're checking all of our 1979s. We've probably found like hundreds at this point. And Callum just threw another one under the microscope and look at the bottom of that seven and the nine. I just wanted to show you guys some examples. It can be an absolutely great deal to pick up these bags of pennies. The coin stores usually don't actually check these for things like varieties and errors. So you can find uh, things like doubling and varieties very easily. Like that is super pronounced on that seven and nine. And we've seen a bunch that have none. So when you throw one under and it looks like this, it just pops right out at you and you can see right away. So I think he's found like five of them that look almost like this. And we found a whole bunch that don't. But another great little variety to add to the board for Callum. I'm going to let him keep all these pennies at the end of this hunt as well. But another awesome find. We'll keep going along, see if we can find anything else. Alrighty, folks. Well, we have concluded this hunt. And man, did we find a whole lot of epic stuff. Now, I'm not gonna show you guys every single find of this hunt because there's just so much stuff, but I will give you guys a little idea of some of the stuff we did find. Now, right here is a pile of all of the pre-60 young heads that I found. I think I counted somewhere around 60 or more. So we have actually more than a full roll of pre-60 young heads, which is absolutely insane. We got 53s in there. We got some dates that might have some varieties, like 55. I was checking them, but they're all so beat up that they're probably not gonna be worth too much. So I'm not too worried about the varieties and errors for those, but still a whole lot of young heads. 
Right here in the front is just a little pile of some of the nicer young heads that I found. Some of them are actually in pretty good condition and still have some luster. You can see this 59 right here has some pretty good luster left on it for such an old penny. A little beat up there on the obverse, but still not too bad. But also did pretty good for the George the Sixth in this hunt as well. We got three of them, and considering this is only supposed to be Elizabeth pennies, I am not going to complain about that at all. As you guys know, the George the Sixth are some of my favorite coins you find here in Canada, so definitely happy to get a couple of those in this hunt. No George the Fifth, unfortunately. We also got quite the stack right there of blazing red uncirculated pennies kind of like this 1981 you see right here. They were worth about two points each in this hunt. If you guys are actually wondering, I tallied up all the points and I beat Kellen Buddy by about 12 points. Unfortunately, he was doing really good finding lots of errors and varieties, but I found so many young heads and the George the Six let me get out and break ahead with the lead. But he is definitely happy. He found some pretty awesome stuff in this hunt as well. Now right there we have a pile of toner pennies. This isn't really the nicest one right here, but we have some really nice toners in there with some really awesome bluish hues going on. I did also find two foreign coins in this hunt. Both of them were actually the same, both from Bermuda, one 1973 and 1978. So we actually got two different dates there, which is pretty cool. Now I found two post 96 uh, pennies. I found a 97 and a 98 and I said these were going to be a point as well because they were not supposed to be in the bag but these aren't rare by any means. They're quite common especially if you hunt a box of pennies. You will find tons of them. Now another pleasant surprise in this hunt was this wheat penny right here. This definitely was not meant to be in this bag. It is copper so I can understand how it would have made its way in but at the same time I don't know how this old American wheat penny would have made its way into a big old barrel of what should have been Canadian copper pennies. And what was the date on there again? 1952. I don't see a mint mark, so I think that means it is from Philadelphia. And then over here we have some of my nicer finds of this hunt. This 1964 has an insane cameo. I don't want to touch these with my fingers and dirty them up any more than they are already. But some of these 1965s that I have here are actually pointed five large beads. So if any of these could score in the high MS range, they could be worth some really good money. I might talk to my buddy and see if he thinks any of these are worth to be sent off to be graded. But pretty happy to find pennies in this condition that are this old. That is absolutely awesome. And they are blazers. And I just wanted to show you guys this toner penny one more time because this thing is absolutely beautiful and insane. Just look at the hues on that. It has a little blue, a little purple, a little silver, a little bit of everything going on. So really nice toner penny. But now I'm going to pass things off to Kellen Buddy, and he is going to show you guys some of his finds from this hunt. All right, and we're back to wrap things up. I'm going to show you guys what I got on my first find here, or first hunt rather. Got some 78s. They're all high eights. We got some just miscellaneous, uh, miscellaneous ones that maybe have not been in circulation. Not too sure. Find out. All these guys there are all fifties. That's a lot of fifties. You got these sixty fives here have the large beads and the pointed five. So that's pretty good. There's about I don't know eight there. Not bad. These guys here are just some uh, some random ones. Uh, that's 65 actually, more 65s. Got some random Americones and all 78s, probably said those, but 67. 67s or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this one here is a 1962 hanging two. So what is it that makes it a hanging two? How can you tell, or what makes it, what tells you that it's a hanging two? It tells me hanging two, well it almost appears as it's a hanger, almost like your, uh, the claw is hanging. Yeah, that's good, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is, if it's like a cut or a die chip or whatever, but we checked out quite a few 62s and a few of the ones that you found. That one looks super prominent. You can see, like, going from the maple leaf to the top of the two, it looks like it's almost like hooking it. Apparently, there's also a uh, double hanging two and a triple hanging two, but 
This one just looks like a single, but it's in pretty good shape, so still pretty nice find. Awesome find. Now we're going to get on to some of the 79s that are doubled here. They're pretty, pretty prominent doubling here. If you can see that 9 is pretty, pretty doubled. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my friend. He's a little slow. <laughs> and on the bottom of the 7. And on the bottom of the 7 as well, yep, 100%. Like there's a few different attributions. There's like two or three. It can be like double nine, double seven, nine. Yeah, there can be different variations of numbers. It could be a nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, 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 seven, nine, nine, nine. <laughs> you know, it could be all of them, right? This is also another one that's been doubled. Oh, that nine is definitely who. That is a nice nine. Nice boxy shadow on that. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That just looks great. Of a 1948 A to small identical. The A on the back, the last A in Graccia on the obverse is what you're looking for. It's a little hard because you threw them into the coin flips. Keep these. This right here, depending on its condition, even if it's in uh, bad condition. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the. <laughs> there it is, right there. So this penny right here, the 1948 penny A.2 denticles. Which we believe this is. It's a little hard to tell because it's in the coin flip right now. Even in beat up condition, can go for a couple bucks. It's a pretty rare one. So that is definitely an awesome find. I found all sorts of 1948s, and all of them have pointed in between the denticles. And usually it looks pretty prominent. So this one looks pretty promising to me. I don't know what you guys think, but. Yeah, let us know in the comments. What's that, a 1954? 1954. It's in pretty good shape. It's in decent shape. Little little wear on the obverse, but it's still got some luster. Still got still in red, red coloring. That's for sure. Maybe a little red brown, but not bad for uh, what is pretty much a seventy year old penny. <laughs> so we don't really know what this penny is. Daner contacted his buddy, just like Pawn Stars, to see um, to see what it is. Cause uh, it got me pretty excited. Cause he didn't even know. Oh, what for it your was. first hunt to find something like this, even if it's just plated. Or it's definitely intriguing and it is a mystery and it pops out when you're looking through pennies and he passed it over to me. I thought instantly he found a silver dime, but the material looks more like nickel to me. I don't know if it was maybe struck on a foreign planchette or we were looking up possibly partial die collars, but we could not find anything that looked similar to this. So if any of you guys have any ideas, definitely let us know in the comments, but... I'm going to do some research, see if I can find any information on this bad boy and maybe get an approximate value. But for all we know, it could have just been painted very well by some kind of collector or enthusiast that likes to do arts and crafty stuff like this. Or maybe it was chemically plated. I don't know how they would have gotten it on this one side, but definitely a very intriguing find, especially for my friend's first hunt. Yeah, absolutely. If you look at these gouges here, you can kind of tell... It, <laughs> We don't know if there's copper underneath or whether it's a different type of metal because if you were to strike or indent a coin, you would think that underneath would be the actual type of metal it was made with. But this here, there are some indents and they do look like it is a different type of metal that's been plated on top of this. So we don't really know. If you guys know, just put it in the comments. We'd love to know. Today, we took a trip down to our local coin shop and me and my buddy Callan, aka Coin Dexter on YouTube, picked up this big old 10 pound sack of Canadian pennies. Now in the past, we have picked up a few bags of these and we have had quite a bit of luck with them. We have found all sorts of errors, NIFCs. You'll find lots of pre-60 pennies. There's only supposed to be pennies that are from the year 1964 until 1996, but a lot of the time there'll be other goodies that are actually mixed in here. So we decided to pick up a big old sack and have ourselves a nice little hunt. We got the scopes all fired up and ready to go. But before we can tear into this bag and start sifting through this massive sack of copper, I would really appreciate you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more coin roll hunting videos just like this. And then without further ado, let's tear this big old bag open and see what kind of goodies we can find today. Let this hunt begin. All right, guys, Daner here. We have both started sifting through our piles of pennies and I already have a George the Sixth here. So I thought I would pull it out 
flip it over and we could look and see what the date is together. 1941. So there are no varieties for 41, but it is a World War II era penny. And it is a little bit older, so pretty nice little find right there. Definitely not supposed to be in here. I'll throw this off to the side. Keep going through. Just going through, and it looks like we got ourselves our second George the Sixth of this hunt. And it is a 1949, so there's actually a variety we can look for for this year. What we need to do is flip over to the obverse and check if the last A here in Gratia points in between or to the identical. So let's throw it under the scope and take a little look. All right, let's throw the Georgie under. We want to look at the last A. And it looks like it is pointing in between. And those also look like small denticles. I believe there are large and small denticles, and that can also affect the value. But we have the more common variety here, which is the 49 points in between the denticles. But still, a nice little Georgie for us to add to the board. All right, Kellen back here, turning you guys in. Came across a 1948. Wanted to see it all together with you guys. So let's take a look-see. All right, we have the scope fired up and we're gonna take a look-see as to what this one is. It could be a eight points to identical, which would be great. So let's take a look. So you wanna look at the last A. Oh, look at that. Cool. That looks like it could be the eight points to identical. Do you say it was a 48 or a 49? 48. 48, okay, so yeah, that is definitely the A points to what looks like a large denicle. So that is probably the rare of the varieties. It might be worth a dollar or two. It's pretty beat up, but yeah, not very beat up. A pretty nice find still. It is definitely a good collection filler. So great find for Kellen. Let's bring you guys in here and see this toner that we just uncovered. This, in Dane's opinion, is one of the nicest ones he's ever seen. Here, actually, here, I'll grab it and show. I'll grab it and give you guys a little look. Look Absolutely. at the colors on the obverse of this thing. There's like purple, green, blue. It is absolutely beautiful. And then we were curious to see what the date was. We flipped it over and look at the reverse. That whole thing is blue. That is a blue penny. And it is a 1957. Now, I'm a little skeptical that this could have just been heated or altered to get to this tone, but if this is actually natural toning on, and this scored anywhere above the bottom of the Sheldon scale, it could be very desirable for somebody. If you guys wanna let us know what you think about this penny, is it natural toning or is it artificial? But all I know is this is one absolutely gorgeous toner. Right on, and you know what? While we still have this thing going, we have a Georgie somewhere here. Oh, I have it right on my radar there. Do you wanna? I'm going to take her out. Here, I'll, I'll do the honors. We haven't flipped this one over yet. We have no idea what date this Georgie is going to be. But let's take a little gander. Oh, 46. A 1946. Nice. So we're actually getting a nice little date range here of George the Sixth. It would be awesome if we could get a little lineup of maybe like 41 to 52. That would be awesome. But a nice penny for Callum to add. I don't think he has a 46 Georgie yet. So he can definitely throw this into his collection. Awesome hunt. Kind of bringing back in here. Just found a 1939. Looks pretty beat up. It's okay though. There's no varieties. But still a pretty cool find. Especially when this bag is really only supposed to have dates of 1962 to 1996, I believe they're dates. So 1964. 1964. So it's not too bad. We'll, uh, we'll keep on digging. Dana here. I just found a 1961 that is looking like an absolute stunner. And there is an, actually a variety you can look for for 61. It is a hanging one variety. So I'm gonna throw this under the scope and see if maybe we have the rare variety. All right, so what we want to look for here is basically a little line connecting from the top of the one to the bottom of the maple leaf. And this actually does have it. It's very faint, but you can see the little line right there running from the top of the one. I believe it is a die clash. And this can actually be a pretty valuable penny if it scores in the MS range. And this one honestly isn't in too bad a condition. So definitely going to throw this off to the side. And if you guys have any opinions on its value, definitely let us know down in the comments. All right, Colin back here, bringing you guys in. Just found literally these two Georgies like right on top of another. So let's take a look, see. What's that one? That one is a 1945. Nice. 
I think we might even get like a full date run in this hunt. And what's that one? 1947. So it looks like you got a 47 Maple Leaf. So that was struck in the year 1948, actually. So I think this is the less rare of the two varieties. But still, we might get a nice little date run of George the Sixth Pennies if we find any more in this hunt. All right, guys, Daner here. And it looks like it is raining George the Sixth for us because I actually just found a George the Sixth here in my little pile. And it is a 1950 George the Sixth. So no varieties. To look for for this date but still this is another one that we haven't found yet in this hunt painter here just a little pile down from that last george the sixth we found and it looks like we got yet another georgie this one is a 1951 i think we have actually already found a 1951 in this hunt so this will be our second one so far but the george the sixth are stacking up all right come back here found another georgie let's take a look see 1941, not too shabby. Dana here, we got another George the Sixth in that same pile that I was just sorting through. This one is a 1949, so you know what that means. We can throw this bad boy under the scope and see if we have an A points to Denicles. Now, I looked up after the last 1949 that Callan actually found, and there are a few different varieties for this. There is an A points to large denical, A points to small denical, and depending on whether they are the small or large denicles, it can affect the value. The one that Callan actually found is the less rare of the two different A points to denical varieties. But let's throw this one under and take a little gander. All right, let's take a look at that last A in Gratia. And it looks like it is pointing in between the small denticles. What a surprise. Every 1948 and 9 I get, that seems to be the case. But still, a nice old Georgie for us to I add to the board. there was some doubling there. Where, where were you seeing the doubling? Oh, on the... Uh... Hang on. Just a little bit. I think so. I'll zoom in a little bit more in your scope. Like with the eye? It's hard to tell. There might the be a. some like very small machine doubling going on. You can see a little bit maybe on the bottom of that eye, but it's so minor that it's not going to affect the value, especially considering that this is actually the least rare of all of the different varieties. But still, a Georgie for us. I will throw it with the others. Keep going along. All right, Colin, you bring him back here. One of I found a, a 1956 with unreal toning, and I wanted to compare it to that other 1957 that I found. So let's take a look. See here, so you can tell it's almost like a rainbow color around the uh, the maple leaf there. Wow, that just that looks unreal. Take a look. See on the other side. Compared to the other one, wow, those are some really cool toners. All right, guys, Daner here, and Kellen just tuned you in for those amazing toners that he found, and I just wanted to show you guys this. It's a little hard to see, but it looks like I just found my matching toner for the ones that he found. Now, this right here is absolutely gorgeous. It has purples and blues, and it is actually a 1958. The fact that it still has luster left on it with all of these amazing colors and tones the obverse isn't quite as nice but it actually has the toning going on on the little spots where it has the spotting so what would be usually carbon spotting is some really nice toning and this kind of tells me that it might actually be more natural toning than artificial or it could have accidentally had some chemicals sprayed on it and maybe that's where the tone came from but regardless these are some absolutely beautiful toners some of the nicest that I've ever seen in my life and the fact that they are 1950s pennies is incredible and well I actually have you guys here I might as well show you this that I just found because this may be one of the finds of the hunt I don't want to manhandle it too much I'll hold it in between my fingers but this is a 1954 penny and this is definitely at least in a low grade MS state I would say the obverse is super nice and this is an absolutely beautiful coin right here I'm going to check the book value of the 1954 when it is in a high grade state like this and see if we have anything valuable. But regardless, definitely a beautiful, beautiful penny. We are finding some amazing stuff and we are not even done yet. We got a little bit to go. So we'll tune you guys back in if and when we find anything else. 
All right, guys, Daner here. I'm just finishing off the last of my pile. These are all of the pennies I have left. And it looks like we have one last little gift for us, and it is going to be a George the Six. And this one is a 1947 Maple Leaf. Kellen already found one of these earlier in the hunt. It would have been nice if it was the 47 plane, just so we could have both varieties. But at the same time, you can never complain when you find a George the Six, whether you are hunting a box of bank pennies or you're hunting a wild bag of scrap copper. They're definitely nice to find. So I'll throw this on the board. I'll finish off my little pile here. Callan still has a pretty hefty little pile of pennies to sort through, so maybe I'll give him a hand and we'll speed this up a little bit. But let's finish this hunt off for you guys. What do you say? Alrighty, well, we have concluded this hunt. Before I start wrapping up all these awesome finds, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to see more coin roll hunting content just like this. And then what do you say we show you some of the goodies that we managed to accumulate today? So we managed to score quite an epic haul of 50s pennies today. I have them all sorted by date into piles. So these are the 53s, the 54s, the 55s. I made sure to check all the 55s for the no shoulder fold because that is definitely a good one to look for. And as far as I could tell, they all came up enough nada. The ones that we found the most of in this hunt were the 56s and 57s. We have two pretty big piles of those. We got a couple 58s, some 59s, and then here's all the American pennies we managed to find in this hunt. There weren't supposed to be any American pennies in this bag, so it is a little bit of a bonus or a little bit of a curse. I don't know really what you want to call it, but they are all memorial pennies, no wheat pennies in there, unfortunately. No key dates or varieties, all just common U.S. cents. And here are some of the nicer modern pennies that we found in this hunt. We have some 2008s and some nicer 90s and whatnot. I made sure to check all the 2008s for doubling because there is a variety with machine doubling on the 8. And I did not see anything that jumped out at me. As far as the uncirculated finds in this hunt, we did really well. That one right there, I believe, is actually a specimen that came out of a set. I think it was obverse face down in the set and usually that's how it gets that kind of toning and also just by the relief and the cameo on the queen it looks very similar to other specimen strikes that i have seen of the era then we got some very nice blazers we got a 69 a 70 that are looking very nice this one i also believe is definitely a hundred percent out of a specimen set both from the relief the finish and the queen's bust it looks very specimeny to me i don't really know what how else to call it but it definitely looks super suspect and it kind of has that toning on the reverse, like possibly it was sitting in one of the double penny specimen sets. But we also got a nice looking 61, pretty nice looking 64 right there. Very nice, actually. I think the 64 might have a cameo. The queen is very frosty on the obverse. I don't want to touch them any more than I have already. Very nice looking 63. And then we got some very nice um, 50s pennies with some good relief and luster left on them. They don't have much, very much damage and they are still looking very shiny. Right there is a beautiful 1954. This is probably the nicest 50s penny that I've ever found in any of my hunts. Definitely in the low MS scale, probably worth a couple dollars. This 58 is pretty nice as well. And then this is an 80s penny that is just looking a blue, blue, blue. I don't know if it was heated up or what happened to cause that, but it is definitely pretty cool looking. It is about as blue as you can get. And this is definitely the toner find of this hunt. It might even be my favorite find of this hunt is this 1958 toner that is just absolutely gorgeous. The colors on this thing are unreal and you don't find them like this too often with this kind of tone and this kind of condition. It is definitely a good one and definitely validates this hunt. And as far as the George the Six go, we did very well in this hunt. We got two 1941s, a 47 Maple Leaf. We got a couple 1949s. I made sure to check them all for the eight points to identical. And they are all the non-rare variety, unfortunately. We got a 1950 and a 1951. So a pretty good run of George the Six. I would say this is definitely a good hunt worth the money and investment. If you guys would ever like to do any penny hunts like this, I definitely suggest checking out Coins Unlimited. They are a great coin shop, very fair prices. And you never know what kind of bonuses you can get when you buy stuff off them. So I'm going to pass this over to Callan. He's going to show you some of the goodies that he managed to accumulate. 
and then we shall wrap this video up. All right, Kellen here, just wrapped up. Definitely a hunt for the ages, 100%. Just gonna start off here with one of the oldest coins that I think I've ever found in 1939. Pretty cool. Right here, this pile is just a bunch of um, almost uncirculated uh, bird pennies. Uh, they're in decent shape. All these guys right here are all 1950s. I can't believe I found that many in this hunt. These are some of the nicer pennies that I found out of this hunt here. They're really shiny. Let's keep on uh, going down here. I'll show you guys some of them. Some of them have a little bit of toning to them as well. 1969. I almost got all the um, the years in this hunt, I must say. I'm not sure where exactly it is in your massive pile there, but you did find a 1964 that was very interesting looking. It had a lot of luster left on it, but it was not red. It was completely brown. So I think he may have found a mint state brown penny in this hunt, like a high mint state. We found a mint state brown penny here. So um, something magical must have happened inside the roll for it to come out this way. But it is in a min state. There's no scratches or anything on it. And it's kind of hard to see from the camera. It's almost making it look more red than it is. But this thing, for as shiny as it is, I can tell you is brown, brown, brown. And I don't know why it would have this color. I don't see them like this too, too often. And it's honestly less rare usually for a penny to be in a mint state in brown. But usually when I find them in these hunts, they will be mint state in a red condition, blazer red. But still, this kind of jumped out at me. If you guys have any theories on the finish or color of this coin, then definitely let us know in the comments. But you can even see, just when I'm doing that, that there is a ton of relief left on this thing. But the color has just changed to brown. So, probably a mint state 1956 brown designated penny. So, these guys here are some of my favorite finds of this hunt. The 75 is a beautiful tone on it. This um, 67... Right here has a really nice uh, cameo. Can't complain about that. Really cool toning on the 64, 57, and 64. The 57 is almost uh, mint state, I would say. So these are the epic finds of this hunt, in my opinion. This 1964 has a heavy cameo, I would, I would say. I'll flip it around and show you guys. You can really tell. I think that's awesome. That could even be an ultra heavy cameo. Like that queen is so white and frosty on that penny. And if you look at the lettering, it's almost white. So what the, what actually causes that apparently is there is acid left on the dies when they are striking it. And as the acid wears off, the cameo will become less visible. And this looks like it is probably an early state heavy or ultra heavy cameo to me. So that is a beautiful 1964. And these are my two favorites right here, 1956, and then that one right beside 1957. And they have a super duper rainbow toner to them. I cannot believe them. Flip this one over here and show you guys. That one is blue. It is blue, blue, blue. Flip this one over. That is like its matching twin, but the opposite. I think the one on the right is a little bit nicer looking in terms of the desirability. But both some absolutely gorgeous toners. The purple on that one is pretty nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, I truly have to say that these are some of the most beautiful toners that I have ever seen in my entire life. The fact that it is actually a sequential date run, 56, 57, 58 is a little peculiar. I don't know if someone was maybe doing a science experiment at home on these pennies. And that is how they resulted in this fabulous tone that you see before you. But regardless, these are amazing. The fact that they're in this condition as well is very rare when you see this kind of toning for this date range. But this was an epic hunt, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. How's it going, everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins. And I am joined once again by my good buddy, Coin Dexter. And we got ourselves a big old bag of pennies to hunt here. We went to our local coin shop and we picked up a 10 pound bag of what is supposed to be copper pennies from the year 1964 until 1996. A lot of the time when you hunt these bags from this particular coin shop, you'll actually find pennies that are much, much older. You'll find some that have varieties and errors, and you can even find NIFCs in here. My buddy found a 2000W penny in our last hunt, 
So we're really hoping maybe we can find some goodies like that. There can be all sorts of treasures in here. You just need to know what to look for. We both have our scopes all charged up and ready to go so we can check for varieties and errors as we go along. But before we do start tearing into this bag, I'd really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you have not and you'd like to see more coin roll hunting content just like this. And then without further ado, what do you guys say? We bust this bag open and start this hunt off. So let this hunt begin. So what we'll do is we will dump this bag out that is so heavy, it actually ripped open when I was carrying it inside. Oh, I think I just lost it on the ground there, oh no. And then what me and Kellen will do is we will divide this river of pennies in half. I will take the left, he will take the right as per usual, and we will start looking through. So let's see what kind of treasures lie in this pile. Here, I literally have just picked out that many pennies. And I found this bad boy. I haven't flipped it over yet. Let's take a look, see what it is together. It's gonna be one of your fir first Here we ever. Go. Not your first ever, but only a couple Georgies you found so far. And what is that? I can't even tell. What does it say there, Dana? Let me see. 1951. Cool. So no varieties for 1951. I think uh, 49 and 48 do have some varieties. So we'll keep an eye out for those as we go along. But Kellen's already got a Georgie, not too bad. Not bad for my seventh penny picked. <laughs> All right, we'll bring you guys in later. You guys, coming back here again. Found a 1966. It just has a weird color, guys. Probably some, well, probably went under some chemical process with some chemicals. But nonetheless, looks pretty cool. It's got some cool tone, how it like gets a little darker in the middle there. Looks almost like it could have been a dime, but... I don't know. We've been fooled by these before, so I'm not going to say that it's silver plated or anything, but a very nice toner. It's not very often that you find pennies that are colored like this, so pretty nice find. Yeah, man. Alrighty, guys. Daner here. I just wanted to bring you guys in. I'm going through my pile, and I have found some pretty nice stuff. We got some uncirculated. These are all 50s right here, but I wanted to bring you guys in because I spotted this in the pile. And I wanted to pull it out and check the date with you guys. We got our first Georgie of this hunt. Kellen's got one already, but this is our first one. So let's flip it over here. And 1951. So this is our first George the Sixth of this hunt. I always like finding these. They are pretty hard to find if you hunt bank rolls, but definitely they are not supposed to be in here. So they are a nice little treat. It would be nice if it was a 48 or 49. We could check it for the... A points to denticles, but still, I'll add this to my board over here. I'll keep going along, see if we can find some more stuff. Hey guys, coming back here, came across a decent look in 1979, and there is some nice doubling going on on the dates here. Very, very nice doubling, as well as you can see on the tip or the side of the maple leaf as well. Some nice doubling. Also, found a nice. 67 with some nice doubling on it as well. Oh yeah. You can see on the Regina there. It's really nice. I, I, I'm a stickler for doubling. I think it's really cool. That's just my um, my niche, I guess. So we'll uh, bring you guys back in soon. Ciao. You guys, Colin here. Came across a 1959 and it looks almost uncirculated, I would say. It is a beautiful looking piece yeah you flip her over it looks gorgeous yeah, even the obverse is really nice probably hitting the bottom end of the low ms scale so we will uh, look up the price on this and coins in canada's website and if it is worth anything significant then we will let you guys know but still a very very nice pre-60 penny Going back here found a cool english penny right across the mersey <laughs> <laughs> it's a 1980 new penny uh, foreign coin. Looks pretty cool. Alrighty, guys. We have concluded this hunt, and we have accumulated a massive pile of finds. This is all of the stuff that I'm going to be holding on to, and this is Callan's Keepers over here. But before we start breaking all this stuff down for you guys, I would really appreciate if you would hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you have not. If you'd like to see more coin roll hunting content just like this in the future, hopefully we can bring you guys some more penny hunts just like this take a trip over to Coins Unlimited, and maybe we can score some more awesome 
penny bags that have all sorts of goodies and treats like this. When you're hunting pennies that are supposed to only be copper from the year 1964 to 1996, and you accumulate all of these older uncirculated and 50s pennies, it is a real treat. And even when you hunt wild penny boxes here in Canada, a lot of the time you won't find this much good stuff. So hopefully we can score some more of these. We can do some more nickel hunts, but what do you say we break down the finds of this hunt for you guys? So we'll start things off over here with the toners that I decided to keep. We have a large variety and assortment here of different colors. That 81 is really nice. It has like purple and blue and it isn't quite as nice on the obverse, but definitely I would say this is one of the nicer toners of this hunt. And we have some 63s, 62s that look pretty nice. They have some like orange hue to them. And what is that one? That one's a 72 that is looking blue, blue, blue. Let's take a look at it here. 72. Doesn't look as nice right there as it does actually when it's laying flat, but... And the obverse is actually looking brown on that. But hey, nice toning on the reverse for that one. And we got some more 62s. This one is incredible right here. I think that's another 1972. And this one is really nice as well. This is a 1962. It has orange, red, and blue. Now, when it comes to colors like this on pennies, there is a few ways they can artificially change the color. They can actually heat the penny up. And that can turn the pennies blue and you can alter them with chemicals as well so i don't know if these are chemically altered they could have been heated up you never know they could have sat out in the cold and then been heated up you don't know what it is that causes all these unique colors but i like to hold on to the toners they're unique they're cool and i like them and then we got some more down here as well some more purples another 62. i find the 62s and 63s a lot of the time will have this kind of like orangish glowy hue to it so I like to hold on to them I don't know if this is considered red brown red or what the color designation is but still I like it so and then this one nice purple a lot of nice toners in this hunt and then we'll get over here to some of the MS pennies that we found we found a whole lot of what looks like uncirculated mint state pennies to me a lot of them are 78. I don't know if the uh, owner of Coins Unlimited maybe busted a roll open and chucked it into the bucket at some point just to uh, get a little bit of extra copper in there, maybe a couple rolls, but we definitely find a lot of uncirculated 78s and 79s when we do our hunts. We make sure to always check the 79s for doubling and hold on to any of the mint state ones, but we didn't really score any really nice mint state 79s in this hunt. And then as far as the older stuff, we scored a huge pile of 1950s Canadian pennies right here and we also got ourselves one George the sixth 1951 penny as well now you'll see that there is a whole lot of 1953s there and a few 55s now I checked the 1953s for the shoulder fold and I checked the 55s for the no shoulder fold and they all came up and nothing nada if you do happen to find one of those they can be worth Anywhere up to a couple hundred bucks even if they are in a worn condition. But this is a nice haul for me. I'm satisfied. I'm happy. We got a couple 50s pennies that still have some luster on them. So you can never complain about that. And the chances that you would ever actually find that in a wild penny box is not nearly as great as in these bags. But a pretty nice hunt for me. I'm going to pass this over to Kellen and he'll show you some of the goodies that he found. All right, guys. Just finished up my third penny hunt with Daner here. And I got to say, I found some real cool bangers here, guys. So this pile here is all 50s, anywhere from 51 all the way to 59, which is pretty cool. I really like collecting the, the 50s um, era coins. I think they're pretty cool, especially when you get some really nice toners, which I will show you guys in a second. I'm going to bring you guys over up here. Some really nice toners. We got a 72, 81. This one here is really neat. This one here appears to be struck through grease. I'm not too sure. I'm still new with this. If you guys want to let us know in the comments what you guys think of this. All right, just fire the scope up. Looks like we're going to run out of battery, but that's okay. We're gonna, I'm going to try and do this quick. Um, got a 67 here. Got a little bit of doubling on the bottom with the date. Sorry about my finger there. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. Looks pretty cool. You can see one on the C, a little bit on the D and on the bottom of the A, as well as the date. 
Very nice doubling. Another, uh, I believe this is another 67. And this has some really nice doubling on the Regina. Oh yeah. That's some real nice doubling. And these are also in some in pretty decent shape as well. No, there's nothing on the date there, but very nice on the on the on the back. This is a really nice uh, 1965 pointed five, and it is a large bead, and it's in great shape. Can't complain about that. I'll take it. Another 1965 in decent shape, pointed five, large bead. Those beads are actually quite large than the other. Yeah, that, that, I don't know. That other one might actually be a small bead now that we. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So one thing that we noticed um, in our last penny hunt is on the identicals for some of the 1965s, they will have what other looks like doubling, maybe some machine doubling, or they can also look like the beads kind of turn into identicals. And a lot of the people reached out to us and told us that it was actually dye deterioration for dates like 1965, 1967, when they strike hundreds of millions of pennies the dyes will get worn down and they will actually carve into them to preserve some of the detail of the coin and it can cause what is known as machine doubling. There can also be double dyes, which is a little bit more desirable, but machine doubling is still really cool and there are some really well-known dates that you can look for. 1967 is one of the pennies that recently has kind of been acknowledged as a good penny to look for with a double date on it and it can also have some doubling in some of the other places as well. You just have to know where to look and what dates to look for the doubling. But as far as the large beads, it is always good to compare. You can see the one on the very right right there has the smallest beads of all. So the beads can be a little bit funky on these 65s. You really got to have some comparisons and examples handy to know what it is that you have. But I think the one on the top is definitely a large beads. And the one on the bottom is looking a little funky, but we might as well hold on to it anyways. Very nice find right here, guys. 1979, and that Ooh. is some nice doubling. Very nice doubling. I can't complain about that. That's that's on like almost all the numbers right there. I don't know if it's on the one. Move it over a little bit more and let's see the one. But yep, that 979 right there is definitely got some good doubling going on, especially the 9 and the 7. So not in the best shape, but still a good variety to look for. Very nice. And the last possible error that we wanted to show you guys from this hunt is this 1964 and it's a little hard to tell, but on the left hand top of the nine right there, it looks like there might be like a tiny little die chip or cud. It could be some damage as well. It could have gotten smeared over a little bit, but the nine doesn't really look damaged at all. And it doesn't look like it has been worn down in any of the places. So it could very well be a little cud. It looks a little suspicious because of the tip of the six there, especially, but you should hold on to it just in case it is a good one. You never know, right? But we always appreciate your guys' expert opinions down in the comments if you have any suggestions or ideas on any of these air coins. If you think they are legit or not, we always appreciate your feedback. Some of these Canadian air coins can be pretty hard to identify. 